there, this is Rona at the Hidden Gardens. Um, today's wee video we're going to pot on some uh, runner beans and nasturtiums which just means potting the little seedlings into a bigger pot to grow on before we plant out and we're going to talk about hardening off plants before they go out and we're going to plant up a tripod with some runner beans and some nasturtiums on it. So um, first of all this is the way we grew our plants. We happened to put the seeds in wee modules. It doesn't matter if you've done them in wee trays, you could, um, the, the same applies when you're potting on. The next size up, probably a nice wee size. I always like to gauge how much space I've got to carry on growing the plants. It's always a trade-off between how much windowsill space you've got and how, how what size of pot um, you've got. Earlier I potted up some runner beans. That's a slightly oversized pot, to be honest. Um, this one's lovely because it's nice and deep and actually I did drop a, like a long plant like that tall one I did drop it fairly low down you can take it lower than this was one of our earlier cardboard tube plants and I did drop it uh, down fairly low in the pot as long as the leaves are out you can bury quite a lot of stem which will support the stem but again you can depends what condition your plants are in so to pot on I'll use the nasturtiums as an example so if yours are loose in a tray, just get a spoon or something and be very careful not to um, try and keep the root balls complete. We recycled some commercial uh, uh, little growing unit things here. So I've got, I think I put, we put three seeds in each unit. So that makes a nice little pot full. You could do one, that would be fine. Odd numbers always seem to be satisfying. So. You fill your wee pot a wee bit on the bottom and plop your wee three in. I'm kind of holding it upright, trying my best not to bury the foliage and then centre them. And once I've got all the soil around, I'm doing this up for the camera, but you normally get a wee bit of a, you can press it down on the table. So I'm pressing my thumb round the edge, but not in at the plant, just round the edge. Get a wee tap and that's perfect. They're a bit floppy just now, but they'll grow on fine. So um, the same would apply with the beans. I won't be worried about hardening off. If you haven't heard the term before, hardening off plants just means um, adjusting the indoor plants that you've started for your garden to the conditions outside where it's cooler. So this growth is quite soft when it's inside and um, you're really having to get them used to quite cold winds and uh, outside. We've had a wonderful month of April, it hasn't rained for a month, it's been very sunny but sometimes the wind was really quite cold. Um, the way we are lucky down at the Hidden Gardens we can harden things off, begin to adjust the plants to the conditions by just maybe opening the greenhouse door and then some of the plants will choose the ones that we want to toughen up a bit and you can maybe bring them out, uh, put the pots in a tray, take the tray out into the garden for the day put it away at night again and if you have a cold frame in your garden you open the cold frame let the air in close it at night if you've grown the plants on a windowsill inside you could either open the window or preferably maybe put them on a tray and take them out into your garden leave them sitting there for the day and don't forget to put them away again at night um, it's hard to say how long you would do that for you really just have to keep an eye on the weather and keep an eye on your plants if they're starting to look robust and tough they're probably fine to stay out even maybe a wee piece of fleece over the top would help. Um, a wee word as well about the peas, you might remember from the previous video I planted some peas in a grape punnet. Well, while we're talking about hardening off, these have been getting sort of kicked around the yard and moved every time they were in someone's way and all the rest of it, and they just got on with it. So my instinct really is that these are quite robust and actually I think they've been out so much I think these are probably quite hardened off, although it's just the start of May. This is maybe one of the few things, these peas, just because of the way they look and I know that they've been out for a few weeks, I think these will be fine to plant. Um, this was a very densely planted uh, punnet for uh, microgreens and then for, for uh, taller greens, but they kept growing and actually I wouldn't try to separate this. If I was planting this now into something, that'll come out like a nice big lodge like that and I would dig a hole that shape and plant them in it whenever in the garden that could grow in a container as well something like the one i'm about to do which is going to have runner beans and nasturtiums in it so i've got a pot hopefully you can see um 
and the idea being uh, the runner beams are the thing I'll concentrate on, the nasturtiums are kind of decoration around it, but the runner beams are twiners, they need a stick to twine round, they don't sort of cling or they, they need to sort of go uh, round things, so there's various options. You can use, um, if you just look around, people have all sorts of different solutions. You could, uh, what I'm doing, I'm holding the top of these. If you get some twine, tie, tie, tie this top and make a wee, tripods are always stable, but you can add more sticks if you want. And again, I would, I don't know if you can see the top there, but I would tie this part um, tightly. You could make it taller. Runner beans are quite tall. One of my canes here, and I couldn't find three that were all really tall enough, in which case I would bring the canes together higher up. And just purely because I've put three sticks, I'm going to plant three plants in this. That's probably quite a good amount for a, a container this size. A quick word on the container. Um, uh, this is a pot with drainage holes. You could use a domestic bucket, the handle is gone from this, but I mean you get these in a hardware shop, it's a similar thing. Um, if you have a drill, maybe just drill some holes at the side. Uh, sometimes you have an old bucket that's cracked in the bottom will do, but you could give it a couple of extra holes because the runner beans won't like to sit wet, so you need to make sure sometimes the water is blocked by the bucket sitting on the ground. So that's a nice cheap and cheerful thing. I've got this though. Um, another uh, idea might be uh, twiggy sticks. They're not that twiggy these ones but they're also got a really wiggly one but it's amazing even with a really wiggly one you can kind of and if you put enough of them in it can look quite nice actually by the time you have a few things climbing up that again just tied tightly at the top well, I've got my, my little I haven't hardened these ones off but we can throw them on this big pot on in the greenhouse to and, and just air it like I said with the door open. so what you would do at the bottom of each pole that's where you would plant your your runner bean. Just dig a hole. So just keep an eye on them, and the, as they go up, just you can find out they they have a preference for. Uh, I've forgotten which way it is in the northern hemisphere of the planet. They'll twine one way, and this, if you took a packet of the same seeds to the southern hemisphere, they twine the other way. So they do have a pre preference clockwise or anti-clockwise. So these are the main things they're going to be climbing up, and I. I would tie the top of that. The nasturtiums, there are different types. There are little bush nasturtiums and there are trailing ones. I happen to know that um, these ones are trailing. So if in between, uh, again three, you know, you've got a nice space in between each runner bean, you planted one of the these little. You've got a choice then, um, depending what your climbing thing is, because these are trailing ones, they don't, they won't twine, they'll actually, they literally just trail off. But if you want to sort of tie them in, if you have other poles, your runner beans are the main things to give the support to, I think, but you can tie in the nasturtiums as well, and, and they will sort of join in with the, um, the runner beans and you'll have some nasturtiums, which are completely edible. The leaves are edible, the, the flowers are edible in salads, and even apparently um, the fresh seeds, while they're still sort of um, crisp and haven't hardened and dried, they can be used like capers. So um, it's a nice peppery taste of a nasturtium leaf. So um, if you don't want to do it, if you have an ugly container or you like the trailing look, you can let the nasturtiums trail down the way onto um, the pavement. And um, yeah, put this in a sunny spot in your garden. All, both of these plants would like that a lot of sun and just attend to your water and make sure they're well. So come and see us at the gardens. It's um, looking beautiful at the moment. This spring is a great time down here. There's a lot to see. Um, loads of bulbs, alliums coming through, um, lots of narcissus, daffodils to you and me, tulips um, all over the place. The Scottish Valley border has got gorgeous tulips, these orange flame coloured ones next to some deep burgundy ones which just seem to heighten the colour of each. They're absolutely beautiful. And um, some pheasant eye narcissus. I'm standing next to the herb border which is coming alive, the mint is coming through, the chives are setting their flower heads so give it a few more weeks and the, the chives will have their wee purple flowers covered in bees, the bees will love that so come and see us.